As the sun sets and darkness falls, something will happen on these beaches in Trinidad and Tobago that's been going on for millions of years. Giant prehistoric creatures haul themselves out of the sea and up the sands to lay their eggs, as their ancestors would have done. This is the world's largest sea turtle, the leatherback, one of the most ancient species on our planet. I think back, you know, in the time of the dinosaur, the dinosaur probably would be roaming at the back in the forest, and leatherback turtles was laying on the beaches. It's amazing. That they survived the mass extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago is remarkable. And now on these Caribbean islands, the second most important nesting site for these turtles in the world, dedicated local people are combining efforts and local resources to protect them. The very first time I saw these animals, I fell in love with them. I knew that I would be an integral part in helping them. And help them she did. For the past 26 years, Susan Lacan has dedicated her life to the protection of the largest sea turtle alive today. We did some um, testing with them. She's a founder member of an organization called Nature Seekers. Turtles was in a lot of trouble. Turtles were being killed in large numbers in Trinidad. Most of the turtles that were killed was the females, because they're the ones that came to lay their eggs. These giant creatures, which can weigh 1,000 pounds, are easy prey for poachers with their slow-moving gait on land and non-aggressive natures. I would see huge turtles with just no part thereof missing, senseless chops all over. Sometimes just a flipper missing or a few pounds of shoulder meat. And this carcass was left there to rot. The blood was everywhere. And I said, you know, I'm going to do something about that. Susan and her friends, family and other community members started patrolling the beaches at night, which is when the turtles come out of the sea to lay their eggs to make sure the creatures were safe from poachers. Uh, we have a turtle at the end of the road and the research. They will never kill the turtles when we were there. They will wait till we leave, so we would never leave the beach. And we would sit and wait until every turtle go out at sea. And this meant spending all night, every night on the beach during the five to six month nesting season, an extraordinary commitment. Some nights there may be 300 turtles on eight mile long Matura Beach in northeastern Trinidad, where Susan is based. So protecting the turtles was and still is a momentous task. But protection also comes from a surprising source. The forest is really a huge deterrent for people coming in into that area because it's a vast area where the forest is separating the community and the beach. It's a, it keeps away so much illegal activities. The wide swathe of coastal forest forms a natural barrier protecting the nesting turtle and her eggs. But the forest also has an important and unique role as a navigation aid for the turtles. All turtles are extremely sensitive to light and will only go to nests where it is dark. At night, forests form a dark line along the shore, a much darker mass than the moonlit sea to a turtle. But with encroaching development and building in coastal areas, lights on land at night can seriously disorient a turtle looking for her nesting site. Around the world, nesting patterns are impacted by lights, particularly on small islands with large-scale coastal development. Conservationist Anthony Pitt says artificial lights can have deadly consequences, also for baby turtles. With the hatchlings then, when they hatch, remember they just move with the moon. So when they come out their nest, they saw, see the street light, they just head to the road. So we have a big lossage with the hatchling going to the road. 
Like Susan, Anthony is doing all he can to protect the species. But where he works, further along the coast at Manzanilla Beach, he faces greater challenges. Here, much of the coastal forest has already been cleared for agriculture and development, as happens in so many small islands for economic reasons. Not only is there a problem with street lights, but the scarce tree cover also can't prevent coastal erosion from ever rising sea levels. Ten years ago, there was lots of turtle on this part of the beach, but from last year to this year, we had problems with turtle coming here. And as the trees fall away and rising seas cause the beach to narrow, the turtle nesting space is reduced. A private consortium led by Anthony is now replanting trees at the back of this beach to try to block lights, curtail the erosion and ultimately protect the turtles. At nearby Matura Beach, Susan and her colleagues at Nature Seekers are only too aware how vital it is for the turtles that they maintain their coastal forest. But many small island communities simply don't have the funds to pay for the upkeep of their forests and deforestation is too often the result. So Susan came up with an innovative scheme of controlled tourism, which not only preserves the turtles, but also the forest. So this has generated eco tours that visitors will pay to see the turtles. So we were able to tally and to show how much revenue is being generated as a result of this turtle coming alive each time on the beach to nest. They cannot go in steep areas to lay eggs. They prefer flat areas where they can crawl out very easily and continue the nesting. Just while she's laying her eggs, the turtle goes into a trance and is undisturbed by lights or people. You see lots of eggs here now, where you can take all the flash photos. In 2013, enough money was earned from these tours, not only to provide jobs to more than a dozen local guides, but also to contribute to the maintenance of the coastal forests so vital for the turtle's survival. The patrol gonna go and they'll meet you all and... A team clears a fire break. They also patrol the forest to check for any illegal activity. You're not supposed to cut the trees. You have to have a permit. We would come out every day. So no one come and light fires or destroy the forest, hunt, whatever. This combined effort to preserve both forest and marine ecosystems is supported by the Trinidad Forestry Division and has been heralded by the United Nations Forum on Forests, or UNFF, as a prime example of how a small community is contributing to the conservation of our planet. When you actually understand the reason why turtles will lay their eggs on this particular beach and not others, and that's thanks to forests, that's what makes it so interesting. Benjamin Singer of UNFF recognizes how Susan and the team's innovative scheme is a vital contribution to the sustainable development of this small island. It's one of the few examples where local people themselves are raising the funds through turtle conservation and then reallocating these funds to maintaining their own forests. The success of the venture is apparent. More than 13,000 visitors came to see the turtles on Matura Beach in 2013, meaning that this community doesn't have to depend on international aid for its conservation efforts. Also, the work carried out by nature seekers to monitor, record and tag the turtles provides vital scientific data on this, one of the most wide-ranging of all vertebrates. Leatherbacks tagged in Trinidad have been found as far away as northern Canada, the Mediterranean and Australia. Not only has Susan's work been recognized internationally, but in 2013, the leatherback was moved off the official World Endangered Species list and is now officially classified instead as vulnerable. But Susan is determined to continue to fight for the future of her beloved turtles. There's so much more to learn about them, to understand these creatures and to know how important they are 
and how fortunate we are to have them in our world today. Thanks to the contributions of people like Susan to the preservation of their local ecosystems, an effort that can be replicated by other communities in developing countries around the world, these turtles now make the hazardous journey out to the open sea. They still face many perils, but they are the next generation of this unique sea creature. If I had to live my life over, I would not do it differently in terms of the conservation of turtles. We just need to do whatever it takes to ensure that this species remains so we can continue to enjoy them.